Hey, fellow adventurers, Michelle Trieste, speaker and storyteller. We have here with us today, Joe DeBone, and we want to talk about our uh, trip to Wyoming. And on this occasion, Yellowstone, we had a great ride all day. And, yeah, we did. Great, excellent ride. Yeah. And Gary came up, he joined us from Colorado on this ride. He led this ride. Gary McGrath came up from Colorado, joined us, yeah. and he's a pretty knowledgeable guy. He's uh, been in around all the state parks. He's a surveyor for the government, so he knows his way around a lot of the parks around, a lot of the state and provincial parks. Yeah, so um, it was interesting. We heard so much in the news about you know the heat wave, the heat dome, and roads being closed, but um, we had a great experience and didn't have any of those issues. And well, we had the first stops, go ahead. All those issues uh, are down in lower levels. We were staying at over 5,000 feet and riding up to eight, 9,000 feet of snow on the ground. There's no issues with 100 degrees up there. Yeah. But what it did do, it kept a lot of people out of the out of the area. Uh, some of the businesses are complaining about the thank you very much, the local news stations, uh, telling everybody how hot and miserable it was going to be here, local here, here. <laughs> local here, and and it wasn't. So yeah, yeah, it was we we had a great we had a great yeah. job. Good it was trip. interesting as we went down uh, into the park. We went in from the East Gate, was it? We went in in the East Gate, yeah, Cody. Yeah, and from Wapiti, and then it was interesting to see the um, the trees. How there was you know, there were burnt down trees and and little pockets of, of mm. new growth there. Well, Yellowstone has had uh, not just Yellowstone. Any big forests have had some quite a few fires over the past right, few years. Right. Uh, well, amazingly, which like 75% of them are started by lightning, they're natural. And that's that's been going on for hundreds of thousands of years. Forests burn and it rejuvenates. In a mature forest with lots of uh, uh, cover, upper cover, it doesn't let any sunlight down to the ground, so nothing grows. When you got a canopy like that and a fire comes through, it takes away that canopy and it starts new growth on the floor. You got bushes, weeds, trees, leaves, all kind of all kind of small stuff that starts to sprout up. And it's much better for the wildlife. Wildlife don't do well in mature forests, you know, squirrels and birds and that thing, but but uh and some of the some of the cones from some of these particular trees out there only germinate when they've been in a fire. Oh, They're designed to open yeah, up a fire. Most most of the um most of the most it's of the lodge stuff lodge. yeah lodgepole pines is a predominant tree in uh in Yellowstone in that area. When you get upper altitudes, you get different varieties and lower altitudes, but basically a lodgepole. And what I found over the years, I used to have a friend in, in Wyoming that built log homes. Mm. And in, after those fires in Yellowstone, they would go in and harvest the trees that had been burnt and use them for log homes. So it, did, it didn't totally go to waste. They oh. they used a lot of those logs for log homes. Yep. Okay. They call them lodgepole pines for a reason. Right. They say they're, they're covered, covered in resin? Yeah. Well, resin... Is, Until is they pop, resin like resin is, is basically what you call the the sap in in coniferous trees, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and judiciary trees have mm -hmm. sap or syrup. But right, right. yeah, resin. Yeah. And in order for mm -hmm. those pines to pop and grow, they need the forest. The well, fire, right. Some of them. Just some of the the role of fire. Some there. of them. Some of them yeah. need fire, and the pine cones have the seeds in them, pine nuts. And some of them need they need fire to germinate. Fire. Not not all of them, but some of them do. Right. And lot you can kind of tell how long ago a fire was in an area by looking at the size of the trees. You go by the burnt out area. Of course, the, most of the areas by weren't black anymore because the fires were years ago. Right. But it was green grasses. And if the trees are, say, nine, ten foot tall, that's nine, ten years ago fire. They grow about just about a foot a year. Right, and that that you'll see in some footage later on. Yeah. And um, they said around the park you could see some of the um, layers <clears throat> of fires. 14,000 years ago from the last tree there. So it's it's interesting. Long before any human being lived there, yep. um, you could see layers of the different fires. And we also, it's interesting, we passed through the um, Continental Divide twice. I saw the <laughs> sign once and I was like, oh, and then I saw it again. And that was that was pretty cool to see. I didn't realize that Continental Divide. and Continental Divide is a line. So it's not a straight line. It runs... That runs north, south, east, west, whatever. And that that is the line where 
the water in the rivers and the streams decide which way it wants to go. Right, right, right. On the western side, it flows to the Pacific Ocean. On the eastern side, it flows to, well, primarily Gulf of Mexico and some of the eastern rivers. And you can cross the continental side, the same road going north to south because it intersects the road several right. times going back and forth. It bifractures uh, Yellowstone Park in, in half a dozen places in the roads. Right. And basically, there's not a lot of roads in Yellowstone. You yeah. go in, there's five gates. You go in the gates, you make the loop. We went in, uh, we went in the east gate, made the whole loop around the outer perimeter, uh, inner perimeter, passed all the other gates. So we did like 270 miles that day. Yeah. And we passed the continental divide a few right. times. Yeah, along the east of lake. I know yeah. we went there. Yeah, along, along, along Yellowstone Lake, which is quite a long ride in itself. It takes a right. long which time to get. It was surprised to me to see that people actually bring their boats and they could, they could go in oh, the lake. Oh, yeah. The lake. So yeah, no, it's, 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 cool. it's, it's a big, I think it's like the second, maybe, might be the first or second largest right. lake. Uh, in the United right. States. Yeah. And, and we were looking at the um, the traffic going into Yellowstone. You could actually go online and see live web um, just to see the traffic. And it was funny because we're looking at it. It's, it's the weekend there now when we're talking. But when we were there, it was, I think it was a Tuesday or Wednesday when we were there. And there was no traffic. It was great. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I think on Monday we did the Red Lodge, Red Lodge, right? And Beartooth, which you're probably, yeah. you've probably already seen yeah, that video. I did. I did. Yeah. And I'm wearing my t-shirt that I got there. And how many, how many curves and switchbacks? Uh, the Beartooth says, I remember the exact number. 82 curves and 19 switchbacks. All right, cool. Yeah. Yeah. That was a great <laughs> <one>. <laughs> and then, So it was Tuesday we went into the park and we never had any weight at the gates. Yeah, it was, it was wonderful. Yeah. We were watching the West Gate which is in West Yellowstone right, right. today. And traffic has just stopped there right. waiting again. That was at eight o'clock this morning, and their time. So Yeah, and save your ticket because we learned later on, we're jumping ahead, but we learned when we went, where do we go after? And we reused those- um, Devil's tickets. Tower. Devil's Tower at the end of the trip, at the end of this trip, we'll talk about it later. We actually had our Yellowstone State Park uh, passes. Yeah, we're still good. Still good. So save save those passes. Yeah. I don't think you won't use them again. We're good, I think, for seven days. Well, mine was um, good, Don. Oh, he's, yeah, he got the- I'm a senior, pass. I got the senior citizen pass, so. Yeah, you mine's good Kevin, for Mine's good for a year. Right? Well, she's the baby in the group, so. I know, so I she had to pay regular price. Seven, I think yeah. I paid like 30 or $35. Yeah. But the other guys, they, you all paid like $20, $20 or bucks, something. $20, it was yeah. good for seven days, so. Yep. Yeah. And um, we also, when we were looking online at the, so you can look online and see the traffic flow, but also another great thing is you could see live web. There's a fund someone um, generously paid for cameras to be at some of the, the glacier, like Old Faithful. You geysers. Could go, the geysers. Yeah. You could see live footage of that. Yeah. So look on, I think it's <clears throat> NS NPS.gov under Yellowstone and you can see live webcams of those geysers we went to see old faithful old faithful's uh only one of the several geysers that are in yellowstone there's quite a few but old faithful's the most famous one and contrary to what everybody thinks it's not as faithful as you believe <laughs> they say every hour well within a few minutes either way we got we pulled in there and we asked the ranger when's the next eruption he said it was five minutes ago but it hasn't happened yet yeah. so you guys are right on time so we have to oh, wait we were so and it came lucky. Up, yeah we we're so lucky otherwise could be waiting for an hour to an hour and 20 minutes they say it's on the hour every hour but not quite but it was a it was a pretty good thing to see i've seen it quite a few times and on a good uh on a good day when the pressure is built up right it'll go 140 feet in the air yeah. 140 150 feet yeah it's way up there makes pretty good sound too yeah yeah and and on our way in actually driving around we pass a lot of i don't know what they're called but this uh hot springs the hot springs you could see from the side of the road we were looking into i don't recall which lake you can look on our map but we could look off to the side and you could see um, steam, steam coming steam up. coming yeah. up from this in between like the road and the, the uh, short distance to where like the lake was or whatever which, and you could see that steaming up it was like which steam. tells you steam steam is generated 212 degrees of boiling point which tells you that it's at least 200, it's boiling point, 212 degrees. Yeah. Best enemy coming up. Some people foolishly, yeah. I've heard stories about people foolishly going in, touching their hand to the foot in to see how warm it is. Well, they find out pretty quick, you know. Yeah. And um, yeah, I just felt like we were on like Mars or something. <laughs> I was like, this is pretty cool. Yeah. And Yellow, we, Yellowstone made, is pretty cool. And then we made our way over to some of the other, um, what do you call them? The hot springs. Craters, spring, craters yeah, hot, hot springs, springs, and pots. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're bubbling over all different colors. Yeah, you gotta show you gotta show some of them in this? Yeah, okay. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. 
Yeah, so you'll see that. We'll share our um, footage from that. Uh, it's kind of called the super volcano underneath. Uh, well, super volcano erupted um, like 631,000 years ago. So it's there's a volcanic, um, what do you call it? But not lava. Uh, what's that core underneath where it's, uh, where it's really, really, really hot. So all the water, all the rainwater goes down into these, into these pools of water and, and, you know, tries to blow it back up. But comes out of great. amazing different batch of colors too. Yes. It was beautiful. So I'll show you, we'll show you some of those pictures. And next we will come back and we will talk with you about our next trip, uh, the next day over to actually two days. We went well, to well, visit the Cody museum. We went to the Cody museum one day and we took another day. We went up to the town of cook city, Montana, which right. is at the, the Northeast Teton. gate. Well, I think we went to Teton. We went to, right? and then one, we went to the Tetons one yeah, day. So too. we're going to make those two separate occasions. Oh, she forgot to tell you about the Buffalo. <gasps> the Buffalo. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Come like, we saw one huge when we first came in. I was like, I know my camera. <laughs> she said, I want to see more Buffalo. I don't know about Buffalo. So we're coming back. It's getting hot. It's, you know, in the nineties, it's not the hundred, hundred tens they predicted. But in the nineties, we're coming back, come around the corner and oh boy. Line of traffic stopped. Traffic. I said, it's one of the first time. I mean, a line of traffic. One of three things. I said, it's either a herd of buffalo, grizzly bear, or God forbid, somebody get injured in an accident. And then we were able to ascertain, we got a little bit closer and we ascertained it was a herd of buffalo going across the road. Now, I don't know if you've ever sat on the road, sat on your motorcycle when it's 95, 96 degrees, waiting for a herd of buffalo across. And it was like uh, two miles of cars. They were in front lally-galling, of lally-galling. The buffalo, yeah, they were kind of going back and forth. So yeah, if probably you, if, how many of them, like 40 or something, just yeah, on both sides pretty good of the herd. road, and they would play it, in the middle of the road and go back and some, forth. Some big bulls, some cows, and some calves, and the calves are romping back and forth. So like I said, if you've ever had the experience of sitting on your motorcycle in 90-something oh. degrees, we did a little evasive maneuver, which didn't <laughs> so make we some... Polite yeah, we were, yeah, yeah we, we did a little okay, evasive right, maneuver right, because right. people are sitting in air-conditioned cars. Right. We were, you know... Yeah, they don't realize when you're on a motorcycle, you have the sun beating on you, but not only and that. And you're, you're, you got heat coming off the engine, and the Harleys are air-cooled engines, and sitting there in the sun, moving 10 feet at a time and shutting them off is not good. It's bad for the so bike. We so. had to do a few evasive maneuvers right. to get around some traffic, and but all worked out. Yeah, and the, the Ranger <laughs> would let people go little by little. Yeah. Yeah, we rode by. Michelle got a big kick out of riding by within about nine or ten feet of a 2,500, 3,000 oh, pound buffalo bull. That was pretty wild. <laughs> pretty wild. I was like, it was, very wild. I, 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 it was my turn to go. And I looked at the lady ranger and she's like, go. And I'm like, well, I don't want to stop when he's right there. He's turned this like he wants to go back across the road, this big bull. Yeah. I was like, I'll, I'll just wait until my passage is, I can go through smoothly and have no chance of stopping in front of him uh, <laughs> next to him. I don't know if you got any any video of those, but then we got there a little further. I think Kevin uh, and yeah, Pete. So yeah, Ke Kevin and Pete and Gary and them, they had, picture, they had some yeah. nice pictures. I included that. There was a, uh, there was a nice herd it was a real natural looking setting. He looked off the road down a little valley and there was a real beautiful herd there. Bulls, cows, calves, the whole bit kind of in a, in a wet area, the grazing out there. It was, it looked like it could have been from three, four, five hundred years ago. It was really neat. So right, right. all good stuff. And did you see any other um, animals while we were? Well, that, that one, there was, the distance. there was, there was, the uh, there was, there was some sandhill cranes that were down there in the pond, a couple of sandhill cranes. Right, right, right. And we did see some uh, tundra swans from here to there. A uh, few elk, but nothing that was real close. We saw right, some right. moose on the way coming in right. the day before, but basically in the park was a lot, lot of buffalo this time. Now, you've said you've been there how many times through Yellowstone? Like I don't know, right? probably four or five. I'm not sure. I've been yeah. going through there a long time. On your motorcycle? On right? my motorcycle, right. yeah, yeah. What's been like the most adventurous time you went on your motorcycle through there with some friends? Or well, I kind of camped out illegally one night. <laughs> I couldn't <laughs> find that it. Happen, huh? yeah, I couldn't find a place to stay and uh, came into Cook City and stopped at the Antler. And the Antler had no place to stay. So and I figured I'd just take a ride into the park. I had a tent sleeping bag anyway. Got in a few miles there past the gate and found a little place off the right, pulled over and threw down my tent and had a pretty good night's sleep. But I got interrupted by a park ranger, <laughs> female, said I wasn't supposed to be there. I was lucky I didn't get jammed by the buffalo, but. <laughs> yeah, made, yeah. Got yeah but, but, how long ago is that i don't know probably 25 30 years uh, has it changed much <laughs> the no. park yeah no i probably wouldn't camp there 
anymore because uh, there's been a few bear attacks there this year. Oh, okay. Great. And 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 where I was, there uh, was no camping allowed, let alone in the tent. Yeah. You know, so you, you didn't know better back then, right? Well, I <laughs> I knew better. I just whatever. You know, I was tired. So. All right. Good. So this is 10 years ago? Maybe a little longer. Because the trees are only about, you know, the trees will tell you the height of the trees is how long ago it was, the tallest the new one. They only grow about 40 years. Oh. Wow. So we will be back with um, Joe and we are going <laughs> to share a little bit more about Cody Museum and the Tetons. See you soon. In the meantime, keep your hearts open, mind open and wheels on the ground. Ride hard or stay home. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's my motto. <laughs> Great. Thank you.